Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 3, Section 6 and Chapter 3, Section 7 in Medulla Tal's 8th grade textbook entitled Solving Single Variable Inequality. We start with two definitions. First is the definition of an inequality. An inequality is a statement formed by placing greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to between two expressions. Statement formed by placing greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to between two expressions. In case you don't know your symbols by now, they're on the left side of the board underneath the homework for you. You really should know what those are by now. If you don't, there they are once again for you. Then we have the definition of solution of an inequality. <coughs> the set of numbers that you can substitute for a variable to make the inequality true. The set of numbers that you can substitute for a variable to make the inequality true. bit at the end of last year was solving single variable inequalities, but more of the problems were like examples one and two. The problems you're going to see tonight are going to be more like three through seven where there's actually some solving required. But let's go ahead and review by doing examples one and two will hopefully trigger some memories for you. Right. The first thing you have to have once they're solved, which one and two are, they're solved because there's just one variable and one number. That's what we make them solve. Once they're solved, you need to go ahead and make a number line. On the number line, you need to have two things. You need to have zero and the number in question. The number in question is the other number that's up here in the problem, in this case, seven. So I'm going to put zero and seven on my number line. Now, perhaps you have a little obsessive compulsive thing going you might be needing to put all the numbers in the middle in there. You might want to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in there until you get 7. If you want to do that, that's fine. But it's a possibility that some of the problems could be like 99 is the number you're graphing. So I don't want to hear complaints if you're going to do that, that you've got to put 1 through 98 in there. I'm not requiring you to do that. If you give me 0 and the number in question, I'm thrilled. All right. So the next thing I need to represent somehow is that we're talking about a problem that has less than in it. There's two ways we do that. As you can see at the top of the board is one of the ways. If the symbol is greater than or less than, when we graph it on the number line, you're going to put an open dot there. If the symbol is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you're going to put a closed dot there. Since this is a less than problem, we have to put an open dot on the graph. The dot goes on the number in question. Again, in this case, 7, because that's the number of the problem. Now, that shows me that it's less than versus less than or equal to. But I haven't shown yet the actual less than part. To show the less than part, I show you on the graph where all the numbers that are less than 7 are. Okay. Well, you know the numbers that are less than 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and all the negatives. Those numbers on a standard number line would be off the left. So to show that, I shade off to the left from 7. And the way I do it is put it over the line, and that's the solution to y is less than 7. That number line is the solution. <laughs> Now, I will tell you, in future years, the teachers will have you shade right on top of the line as opposed to over the line. That's actually the correct way to do it, is to do right on the line. But because some people will try and pull one by, sneak one by me and go, oh, it's there, you just can't see it because it's right on top of the line. So I don't have to fight that game. That's why I have you shade over the line. So I don't have to try and figure out where your shading is actually going. All right, so let's try h is less than or equal to 3 or greater than or equal to 3, sorry. Okay, so, number line. 
What two things do I have to put on the number line? What two numbers go on this number line? Corinne? Zero and three. Zero and three. Always zero. And the number in question, three. All right. The next thing I have to put on there is dot. What type of dot? Is it going to be an open dot or will it be a closed dot? Caleb? Open. It's going to be a no. What? It's not an open dot. Oh. It's a closed dot. The ones with the lines underneath them, like oh. we see in example two, use a closed dot. The closed dot tells us it has a line underneath it. And remember that goes on the number in question three. I'm almost done. Now I just have to show where all the greater than numbers are. Will the greater than numbers be off to the right or off to the left? They're going to be to the right. The numbers that are bigger than 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, those would all be off to the right on a standard number line. Zero is not in that list. So we show that. Okay. So now we get into the problems where we actually have to do some solving before we can do some graphing. The steps to that is over here on the right side. Here's the step. Step one, we change the inequality sign to an equal sign. So then it's going to look just like a regular equation. Then you'll solve it using the one-step rules, because these are all one-step problems. There's no two steps in here. Boy, that would be a good thing to do, but not today. Solve it using one-step rules. After you've solved it, then we'll just put the original sign back in and then graph it as we just did with 1 and 2. Again, step 1 is to change the inequality sign to an equal sign. Step 2, solve using the one-step rules. <coughs> step 3, restore the original inequality sign. All right. So in example 3 where I have x minus 5 is less than 8, step 1 is to change it to an equal sign. So instead of less than, it's going to be equal to x minus 5 equals 8. Well, I think you know how to solve x minus 5 equals 8. There's a subtraction in the sign in there, so we have to do the opposite, which is to add. And we add on the same number that's on the side as the variable, which is the 5. So I add 5 to both sides. And I do that, and I get x equals Okay. So I actually just took care of step one and two, changed it, solved it. Once you get it done, then just put the original sign back in. So it was less than to start with. It's got to go back to less than. X is less than 13. Now you graph it. Same rules we just did. So I have my number line. I put 0 and 13 on that number line, 13 being the number in question. Since this is less than by rule, it has to be an open dot graph. And the numbers that are less than 13 will be off to the left, so I'm going to shade off to the left. If you write the variable first, only if you write the variable first, the shading will always go the same way that the arrow points variable first, this point's left, shading to the left. This point's left, variable first, shading.